Good evening, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back once again. Well, hope everybody is doing well this evening. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath on that. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you are probably feeling the way I am right now, and that is, uh, to be perfectly honest, a little bit on the depressed side. Nothing super, super crazy, but uh, see, I had to put some kind of clickbaity title in there to get people here. Um, hopefully mo the majority of you are not stuck in the house, uh, like I have been. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm not stuck in the house. As a matter of fact, if you watch the vlog from earlier, Dan and I did venture out. Now he stayed in the car. He and I got, went on a little adventure today. Um, I actually got over to Aldi twice today because I had to do some grocery shopping. Um, now, I'm sure some of you out there, actually a couple of you out there, are, nobody I really know has or have already called me a hypocrite saying, oh, Matt, you say that you got to be socially isolated, you have to be stuck indoors, but yeah, you're going out shopping, you're going out and, uh, and living your life. Well, that's true. You still have to live your life. Uh, social distancing is something we're going to have to do for a while. Uh, the experts are saying now up to six or eight months until they get this whole... COVID-19 mess under control. Um, but until then, we cannot become hermits like vlog. <laughs> I'm not, no, not going to say his name. I'm not going to say his name. You guys know who I'm talking about, though. But uh, not going to become a hermit like um, life is. Um, just not going to happen. I am a social creature, even though there are times that I need to be alone. And uh, let's face it, we're always dangerous when we're alone and with our own thoughts, right? <laughs> At least I am. But anyway, um, I'm actually doing okay. But I figured a lot of you are probably stuck in the house. Maybe you just wanted to have a little bit of a chat. Um, you know, you can ask me whatever you want. Matter of fact... Okay, the president was just talking here a few minutes ago. I was trying to stream it at the same time I'm doing this live stream, but I think he just uh, signed off. But the latest news, um, it, it's, it's a little on the depressing side, to be honest with you. The latest news is now saying that not only are the elderly vulnerable, but now they're saying that uh, kids and the younger generation are as well. So... Uh, this particular virus is an equal opportunity, um, I don't want to say killer, but equal opportunity uh, infector, I should say. Uh, the only reason that the younger generation um, has a better life expectancy when they contract is just for this plain simple fact they're younger, they're healthier on average, they can fight this off a little bit better than older people can. And I'm somewhere in the middle there, you know, getting close to middle age. I'd like to still say younger middle aged at this point. William McCall says, send prayers up. My sister just got tested, won't know the results for five days. I have now shut myself in. We'll keep prayers out for you. Please pray for William's sister that it's, it's not the dreaded COVID-19 diagnosis. Eric's just pulling up. Chris Garrett goes, I heard pets can all can get it also. Dogs a specialty. Dogs especially. Sorry, I'm a little tired now. Uh, no, uh, I've heard that is just uh, an old wives' tale. Uh, I've been listening to quite a few experts, Dr. Mike, um, Dr. Not Sanjay Gupta, but the other one that goes on uh, Sunday morning, uh, Good Morning America and the Sunday morning show, they're all saying that, no, you can't give it to pets and pets can't give it to you. Though, who knows? Maybe in the days, in the, few, in the future, they're going to find out that that's not true. <laughs> pets, so you're saying, yeah, pets cannot get the coronavirus. However, it's weird to think that they say that this came from animals originally. That's why I still believe the premise that this was an engineered super flu that the Wuhan people, that the Wuhan um, Chinese in Wuhan uh, did in that um, facility 
where they test biological and chemical weapons. There is, uh, look it up, there is actually a facility there where they play with these biological germs, and it would not surprise me if that's where this actually came from. This, I'm telling you folks, is all very, very uh, biblical too. If you read Revelation, it talks about the end times, the different plagues, uh, tribulation, pre-trib, post-trib, Look at it, folks. We are living biblical times right now. And I want to tell you guys something that kind of freaked me out a little bit earlier. Um, after Dan and I got back home, I decided to take a bike ride because I still just need to clear my head because, honestly, this whole thing is just uh, playing on my mind. And uh, I never had a big, uh, I never had a great grip on sanity to begin with. So uh, this is really playing on my last sane nerve in my head. Um, so I took my bike out, did my usual route, um, you know, went went by the thrift store. Thrift store was closed, by the way. I mean, everybody had stuff piled in front of the thrift store. They're not supposed to do that, but they'll do it anyway. Uh, then I bought, bike rode over to Aldi and picked up a few mangoes, um, a couple odds and ends I forgot to get when, when I was with Dad. And then I rode to um, Food Lion, and then... I went down this little road uh, that's right near uh, a church that we used to go to once in a while. Good news. It's it's called Station House Road. And it was one of those roads that they built. It's, um, it's one lane each direction, but there's really nothing on either side. It's very, very sparse. There's wood on, woods on both sides. And as I was riding my bike down the road, I looked up at the top of the one of the light posts, because it's a lit road, and sure enough, right at the top of that light post was a giant raven. Not a crow, a raven. This thing was humongous. And I was godsmacked at that point because my mind went right to that scene in the Stephen King's The Stand, the very opening scene where the raven was perched on the, um, uh, what was it, the fence? And that's before all H-E double hockey sticks broke loose. And throughout the entire miniseries, the devil was portrayed as that raven. And the raven has always gotten a bad rap. Look at look at what the, the parts that played in Edgar Allan Poe's poetry. Um, but it just got me thinking. I'm like, you know what? We are seeing the biblical times happening right now. Now, is this going to be the plague that is going to, you know, decimate the population? No, I don't believe that because I honestly don't believe reading the Bible that that's the way um, humanity is going to end. It's not. You need to read the Bible for sure. I'm not going to be a preacher here because I don't have that particular gift, if you will. Um, but that being said, there are going to be various small plagues that are going to, um, befall humanity during the end times. And I think this is one that we're actually seeing right now. Never saw the, what is it, the living a movie right now? It is like we're living a movie right now, Tony. Absolutely. He goes, it's like we're living a movie right now. I want to fast forward to the end of the movie to get back to normal. I'm telling you, it's 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 scary times. Yeah, and and honestly, that's another thing. Um, I don't want to give it whole thing away because I did just finish uploading today's vlog. Um, but one thing with Dan and I did is we rode around and we looked to see what churches were actually still holding services, and I want to say we passed. 14 churches, and out of those, only two were still holding Sunday services, uh, and ours was not one of them. I'm doing all right, Classic Mobile Home. You know, just... Uh, it's getting me down. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not shut in, so I'm not as bad as a lot of you out there are. I know there are a lot of you, um, especially in the big cities, New York, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago. A lot of people in the major cities now are pretty much on lockdown. They're on quarantine. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, somebody, and I don't remember who it was, um, 
I can't think of it right now. But anyway, one of you told me that um, New York City is like a ghost town. I mean, it's like that scene in I Am Legend where Will Smith is hunting right, right next to Times Square for food because he's the only one left in New York with his dog. Um, so I'm not as bad as a lot of you are out there, but that being said, it's very, very scary right now. And I don't want to sugarcoat anything, but we just don't know. We have to be smart about it. Look at the stinker right there. Baxter. Baxter. He knows he's not supposed to be up there, but what are you going to do? Chris Garrico, there are some eBay are selling toilet paper for $100 plus $20 shipping. Now, that's called price gouging. And if you are caught doing that, a couple things can happen. Number one, if it's you're caught doing that on eBay with anything like that, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, they will immediately, immediately disable your account. And number two, there are actually, uh, there are actually laws, um, price gouging laws that come into effect during crisis times. They could technically be prosecuted. Now, is that really ever going to happen? Probably not, honestly. But that being said, morally, it's wrong. During times of crisis, you need to think about your fellow man. Yes, you want to take care of yourself. You do need to make sure that you have enough stuff for yourself and your family. Um, but that being said, hoarding is never the answer, folks. You do not need to go to Costco and buy 20,000 rolls of toilet paper. It's just you're never going to use them, folks. And what do you do after the crisis is gone? You're going to be stockpiled for life with toilet paper. It just it, it, it plays on a fundamental need that we have to be prepared for all expect um, expectancies, all all disasters. Why toilet paper? I don't know. Maybe because it's a basic necessity that we we all need. I mean, it's the same thing. Like you go in the stores, the meat's all sold out. Um, the dairy products, the milk, the bread. Think of think of it. Those are the staples: milk, bread meat, um, toilet paper, napkins, all of the staples, things we have to have are sold out in the stores. Um, it's actually really amusing to me, you know, finding humor in, in these times of troubles that the things that you can still get in the store are the healthy items. Like if you go into the produce section in most of the stores, it's fully stocked. Like I was able to go into Aldi and I could get mangoes all day long. I was able to get my bananas. I mean, the, the produce section was fully stocked, but almost every other section um, was sold out. Though oddly enough, they still have a lot of canned goods. So go figure that one out, right? Hired gun goes. Unfortunately, guys, there is no timeline. It passes when it passes. All we can do is hunker down and keep ourselves and our families healthy. Well said, my friend. Definitely well said. Don't buy out stores. Leave some for the folks that need it. Uh, treat each other right and hope for the best. Again, totally agree with that. Eric goes, I made a joke post with some toilet paper, but it should be obvious it was a joke. <laughs> I'll have to look at that later. Yeah, you got to find humor in uh, in this somewhere. If you don't find humor, you will lose your sanity. Uh, it's just, it's going to happen. So, you know, try to um, try to have fun. You know, maybe have some family time. Yesterday, Dad and I, Mom, Dad and I played some Trivial Pursuit. Oh, that's what I want to tell you about. Um, we have a really old Trivial Pursuit game. I'm talking probably from the early 80s. It may even be older than that. But anyway, um, one of the questions was, what is the name of the head female chipmunk in the group called the Chipettes? And, of course, I knew it, Brittany. But I was surprised. I had actually forgotten that the Chipettes were introduced in the early 80s. As a matter of fact, um, when they started the new Alvin the Chipmunks series uh, in 1983, actually it started about maybe a month or two after I was born, um, I think it was like three or four episodes in, they actually introduced uh, the characters of the Chipettes, Brittany, Eleanor, and Jeanette. And the reason they did this was 
Uh, at that point, Ross Bagdasarian Jr., who was now voicing Chipmunks because, of course, his dad had passed away, um, had his wife, Janice, and she wanted to, um, what's the word? She wanted to uh, play more to both boys and girls. She wanted to attract the girls to the show too. So she said, an idea said, okay, let's go ahead and add in female versions of the chipmunks. And it just stuck. I mean, they've been there in, in, in the chipmunks repertoire ever since. And I, I love it. I mean, I, 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 you guys know, I'm a huge Alvin, the chipmunks fan, you know, for obvious reasons, you guys can see the memorabilia all over the place. The other question to ask yourself is, do I really need to go to AutoZone or can I stay home? It's a good question because uh, I was in the same boat. I was actually going to go to O'Reilly's. I wanted to pick up some gum out uh, fuel cleaner to put in my Tahoe. But then I said to myself, you know what? There are needs and then there are wants. That was definitely a want. The Tahoe will run just fine without it. I just do it as preventive me measure. The needs are things like going to the thrift, uh, the thrift store. <laughs> Wake up. This is on the blink again. The uh, the grocery store and getting groceries that we do need to get through the week. And now I'm going to say those people that work at the grocery store are the whole unsung heroes of this entire mess because they're the ones that are putting their lives on the line every day, restocking the shelves with all of the things that we need just to live our lives. I mean, think about it. The, think about this, folks. What if those people couldn't get to work anymore um, and, and they had to shut down the grocery stores? How would we live? Amazon? I don't think so, folks. You can't get fresh fruits and vegetables through Amazon, at least not ones that are affordable. I mean, yeah, I, theoretically, I think you can actually buy produce on Amazon, but it would be super expensive. Nobody would be able to buy it. So next time you go into the grocery store, Please, you know, uh, be very kind to the people that are working there, the people that are stocking the shelves, the people that are checking you out, the managers. All these people are putting their lives on the line to make sure that we all have the goods that we need for daily life. Classic Mobile Home is back, and the vegan athlete says, thank God for the grocery workers. Amen. Victor Del Fuente, I grow my own vegetables and fruits in my garden behind my house. That, that's great if you have that ability. And believe me, I love fresh fruits and vegetables. We actually have some fruit and vegetable stands locally that I frequent uh, when it's in season. Um, but unfortunately for a lot of us out there, it's just not a possibility. Let, let's face it, a lot of us live in apartments that there really isn't any place to grow and in my case, even though I do live in a house, the, where the sun is, the actual sun that you need to grow is in, the, is in the front yard. So I'd actually have to set up a garden in the front yard, which is not going to happen, at least not any time soon. You know, if things got bad enough, who knows? Maybe I would. I live in a tiny bathtub. Oh, boy. Well, I guess theoretically you can do some hydroponic gardening in there. There you go. Little option there for you. We got 12 people here and five watchers. I I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to look at the vlog that I uploaded today because I I've been using my cell phone a lot to keep, you know, myself apprised of the COVID-19 situation, you know, uh, conducting business. So my battery has been dying a lot since uh, the last update they did for the Galaxy series. So what I actually filmed today's vlog on uh, was this. This is my good old trusty Sony. What is this in uh, HDR CX240? You can see the model there. I don't think it's going to focus, but um, this is a very, very good camera. I picked this particular one up at a garage sale last year, I think for like $10, came in the original box and everything. But I had a, another version of this that I used for many, many years. Um, this is a 1080p full HD, not a 4K, but a 1080p full HD. 
uh, camcorder. It's got a 9.2 megapixel, uh, what is that, a uh, still image sensor, so a CMOS sensor, records in MP4 and AVC HD progressive. And I actually filmed in the AVC HD mode for the vlog. Even though it takes a little bit longer for YouTube to render that video properly, um, the video quality looks a little bit better. Uh, AVC HD, I believe, gives you a little bit better dot pitch. So even though it's all technically the same resolution, um, it has a tighter um, pixel density. So if you ever get a camera like this and it gives the option to film in AVC HD, go ahead and do it. You get a much, much better uh, quality um, video capture. Uh, this just runs on a regular rechargeable um, lithium ion battery. Another thing I really like about this is um, it takes a removable SD card. Now, the only thing that's a little bit of a negative for me on this, instead of using, this is at the time when they switched from the uh, full-size SDs to the micro SDs. So for a long time, it was hard to find a micro SD uh, card with a high capacity that was affordable. Um, but nowadays it's just, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, they're as cheap as uh, regular uh, full size SD cards. Huh. This takes an SD or an M2 card. I've never even actually heard of those before, but as you can see, a tiny little thing right there, and this one's a 64 gig sand disk. Matter of fact, the only problem I ever had with these, they're so small with my clumsy fingers, I've dropped it a time or two, but hey, still works. Danny Lee, hi, just subbed. I go to school in Gettysburg, and I really want to go back feeling sad and nostalgic as I watch your Gettysburg vlog. Oh, Gettysburg is beautiful. Um, when this whole mess is over, I would love to go back there and maybe film another uh, vlog, one that's a little bit more steady this time now that I have better equipment. Um, we actually visit friends up there that live in Biglerville, Pennsylvania, right, right next to Gettysburg. It's just gorgeous. Eric goes, I lost internet for a few minutes. Okay, yeah, we had some problems uh, not – our net, uh, not our network here, but the neighboring city uses Charter, and apparently they were down for a majority of the day. And I'm thinking the reason that is, is since everybody's kind of stuck at home, what is everybody doing? They're using the internet. They're streaming um, Netflix, Hulu, maybe Amazon Prime Video. Uh, they're chatting online. And here's a fun fact for you. Um Cable internet companies like uh, Cox, Charter, Spectrum, um, they actually use shared bandwidth. In other words, your network is shared uh, with all your neighbors basically on the same node. So the more people that are using it, the slower the network uh, gets. And that's why I like having what we have, which is uh, Verizon Files, which is it's, it's a DSL line. It's a dedicated subscriber line. So our line will never uh, lose bandwidth because ours is, is a direct line from the, the repeater station, what have you, to the house. So if you have a chance to get um, a Fios or fiber optic line to your house, highly recommend it over cable internet. Cable internet was great when it first came out. I mean, it was amazing. But nowadays, when your neighbor gets saturated with the same networks, it just gets slowed down, especially when a lot of people are on it. Thank God for Mountain Dew Zero. I can't do Mountain Dew. I, I can't do soft drinks anymore. I mean, I do like the... Um, flavored seltzers, but if I try to do something like a soda, even a diet soda, just it's way too sweet for me. That's true, awesome computers. Uh, SD cards are pretty much impervious to everything except loss because they are really small. Oh, let me, excuse me, I need to... I need to shuffle myself around here. I think I've been bike riding a lot, not much else doing. I think I'm getting one of those um, pile natal cysts on my, um, oh, how can we be kid-friendly here? My posterior, let's say. So I may have to give up bike riding for a little while. Downy 101, I love you, BB boy. <laughs> 
Well, thank you. I hope you're talking to me there. I could use a little love right now, to be honest with you. Cameron Cloud is here. No, no, I don't do any energy drinks. I drink too much coffee as it is. Um, I drink like three or four cups of coffee a day. Uh, energy drinks would put me into a, um, I actually, you know, it would probably put me into a stupor, like something like a drunken stupor. But for me, it would probably be more like a, a bipolar episode, honestly. Never been diagnosed bipolar, but I would not be surprised if I am because there are times like, I'm way up on cloud nine, and then there are other times that I am down the dumps. And this is like on a daily basis, honestly. So anybody out there that's a therapist, let me know. See if you think I'm bipolar. <laughs> uh, I do enjoy Star Trek from time to time. I mean, I'm not like a Star Trek fanboy or anything like that. I do enjoy uh, The Next Generation. I would like to watch the new series, though. Um, I haven't had a chance to yet. I just don't watch a lot of TV anymore except for late at night. You know, I'm, I'm out and about, you know, exercising, riding my bike generally. Although, once again, I may need to find something else to do because my butt is killing me right now. In older computers, the BIOS flash can become corrupt over time. Now, I've never heard of that before. I know the BIOS in older computers, some of them it's not uh, programmable, like EEPROM memory. Some of it is like read-only memory. Um, that'd be interesting to look at. Like if you're talking really old computers, like three, two, three, forty-six era systems, uh, some of those, the only way to upgrade the, or update the BIOS is actually to pull the old chip out and put a new one in. I do remember that. Chris Garrett, when I had Charter, it was better than AT&T. Never had a problem. I have AT&T U-verse now. Got two lines running from the cabinet down the road. <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm not familiar with U-verse. Um, I am familiar with Charter. We've, we have Charter in our area, just not in my particular town. Oh, man. I need to shut the window here, folks. If you look in the vlog today, I'll actually show I actually show the pollen on the vehicles is really bad. That's one thing about living in Southern Virginia. We have a lot of issues with pollen um, on the on the van today. I was able to to like right wash me on the windshield, and um, it'll last for a couple of months. We'll get real bad pollen like that from like the middle of March to the beginning or middle of May, and it just kills my allergies. Like right now, my eyes are dry. Um, you can kind of hear that the, in the back of my throat, it's like dry and scratchy, which is really bad. That's that's one thing. Um, Dr. Oz, pretty much all of the major um, physicians are talking about with this COVID-19 crisis. You need to keep your mouth hydrated because apparently the way the virus um, infiltrates your body is through your mouth. And when your mouth is dry, your, your tongue, your lips, everything starts to crack and the virus can actually get in that way. And the way you will know that you have something going on is you'll actually have a sore throat and it'll the virus will stay in there for two or three days before it moves to your lungs. So make sure that you keep yourself hydrated. You don't want to make, make sure you don't have a dry mouth. If you can't drink water, um, there are things like biotin that you can gargle um, and it'll keep your mouth moist. Um, I know Dr. Mike on YouTube, I watch him a lot. He really is a um, proponent of uh, gargling with salt because salt is like a natural, um, what do they call it? Like a natural uh, healing agent, natural, um, I can't think which one, but he says gargle with salt basically. Um, I've never had any experience with data rot or if we're talking about like on, uh, SSDs, cause I saw your post before, uh, data rot is more for magnetic storage. So we're talking about like older floppy disks. Um, if you're talking about that, then yes, I have definitely seen data rot with those, uh, mainly with the five and a quarter inch disks, the real old 
aptly named floppy disks that would flop around. Um, but when it comes to like three and a half inch disks, only if they were poorly manufactured to start with. Um, I know there are some really cheap Chinese ones that suffered from data rot early on. But if you had, if you stuck back in the day, if you had stuck with something like um, Fuji discs, Sony discs, um, Imation discs, you're generally going to be okay. Um, what winds up happening a lot of times, believe it or not, uh, people always talk about how unreliable floppy disks were. And they said, oh, the disks were unreliable. The data would get lost over time. That's true, but it wasn't for the reason you would think. It wasn't usually the floppy disk that would go bad. It's usually a floppy disk drive that would damage the disk. And what would wind up happening was the heads would get like a buildup of residue and maybe some like metal filings on it. And people wouldn't clean their, their floppy disk heads enough. So what would happen is when they would put their disk in there, it would start reading the disk and the, the head would have like a, a foreign particulate on it, usually a metallic one, because again, uses a magnet to write and read the disk. And as that uh, head would move over the disk, it would scratch the disk and damage it. So Oddly enough, it wasn't the floppy disk itself that was the problem. It was actually the floppy disk drive that would cause damage to the disk. Yeah, that's pretty slow. 12.5 megabits per second each line, at least by today's standards. It's interesting. Awesome computers goes. SSDs use an electrical charge to keep data on, and over time, the electrical charge fades away. So if you have data on an SSD and store it for a long period of time, like one to ten years, okay, that's why I haven't heard of it, because SSDs uh, really have only been around for the last decade or so, but I'll bet you those early SSDs now are going to start having those problems. I'll have to look this up, but I would think that they have something like a rechargeable, um, where they call it a primo, a PMO check, a P or P, PMO chip on there, which is basically just like a chip that acts like a capacitor. So as long as you're powering up your computer on a regular basis, then it'll probably keep that particular chip charged and you should be fine. But that's good to know. If for people that are thinking about using SSDs for long-term storage, maybe they took it out of their computer, you may want to go ahead and um, hook those up once in a while, make sure your data is still safe. Travis Stoner, I have a Windows 98 2000. I believe I get no display, but computer runs. Please help me out. Uh, it looks like Jonathan Grindle already gave you the answer I would. It's probably a bad video card. Um, but start start with the simplest thing. Um, I would pull the video card out, check the contacts, because believe it or not, the, the metal contacts on there, if they're not really gold, and sometimes they're not, they're platinum or uh, not platinum, uh, like... Uh, I'm telling you, my mind's gone tonight, folks. But anyway, um, make sure they're not corroded because if they're not gold or they weren't gold-plated properly, they can start to corrode. And if they are corroded, uh, clean them with a Q-tip and isopropyl alcohol. Also maybe get in the um, PCI slot or the AGP slot, whatever you're using, and then put the card back in and try it again because it could just be a connection issue. Um, if that doesn't work, maybe try swapping out the video card. Um, you could also look into things like, um, the memory sometimes, believe it or not, the Ram over time can jar itself loose and become loose from the slot. So maybe go ahead and reseat the memory in that one. Yes, I do. I have heard about people shaving off the uh, gold plate on those video cards at the recycling centers to try to make extra money. And it's not just the video cards. Uh, gold pins on old IDE hard drives. Uh, gold pins are on processors, um, especially the AMD processors. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of that going around. Matter of fact, I have a, a buddy of mine that uh, does that on the side. 
apparently makes a pretty good living doing it too. All right, folks, I'm going to have to end it here because I totally forgot to bring my water in here and my mouth is getting really dry and I really need to moisturize myself again all over. Uh, what's going on? Come on, man. Close your mouth. I will do that, Cameron. I will. I've actually thought about live streaming some games. As a matter of fact, now that I have that computer running, um, maybe we can do some live streaming of. I got Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two, and also Star Wars Episode One Racer. So, until next time, have a blessed day, and remember, stay safe. Jesus loves you.